Hey everybody, let's talk acrylic paint techniques. We'll look at some retarder, matte medium, gloss medium, water, uh, working wet on wet, light to dark, and also a dry brush technique. Retarder. Retarder essentially helps your paint from going dry too fast. If that's an issue for you, you just need a couple little drops in a bundle of paint. You'll get these little cups that I'll providing to you to store some of the retarder and you can try experimenting with it. If you use too much though, it stays wet for a super long time. These cups can also be used to store paint. So if you gotta mix up a bunch of paint and you gotta take off, you can use these little cups to, to keep it around for a while without drying out. So water, water thins the paint. It's good to break it down. And in this case, I'm gonna be creating, uh, for this demonstration, a gradation, a gradual shift of these columns that are going from less transparent to more transparent. And much like the underpainting demonstration, you know, you add more and more water, less and less pigment, it becomes more and more see-through, more transparent. I'm creating this effect here, just going back and forth, back and forth. Tip, um, a subtractive way of painting, besides adding, adding, you can remove paint. And the, the, the brush is, is dry and clean, it could soak up that paint. Same thing with your rag or even using your finger to help um, remove it. So this is a second version of creating this demonstration, matte medium and gloss medium. It helps to also thin the paint, but instead of being so watery and thin, it helps to kind of create that, that consistency that is attributed to the acrylic paint, the heavy body acrylics. It's more of a gel-like substance, uh, almost sort of like syrupy or like a resin, or oily in a way too. Um, so same sort of uh, motif here, right? These, these four columns, I'm creating this gradation, this gradual shift from dark to light or for more green, darker green to more yellowish green, depending on which part of the composition you're looking at. And overall, less transparent to more transparent. And these are all gonna be the same kind of compositions going through. Next up, I'm using a wet on wet method. And I'm working on top of a, a underpainting that we created earlier. And I put the white on, I'm putting a yellow on, but because the yellow is transparent, it's mixing with that underpainting and it's not as brilliant and as bright as the other ones that are using the, the white ground with the transparent paint to make it more intense. So I went ahead and added white to that initial yellow layer that I, I put on. So the paint's still wet here. And actually in this demonstration, I didn't use retarder in the white or the yellow. So as I'm working, I can see it kind of to get a bit sticky and it's drying on me. Um, so again, with experimentation and trial and error, you might get a, a sense of when to add retarder or not. But for the most part, it was wet. And so the, the paint is wet from the tube. The, the yellow and the white background was wet. And I'm working light to dark, right? So the background was light and the green paint that I mixed up is darker. And usually you wanna work light to dark because it's, you, you waste less paint uh, going a, from a tint to a shade, going from light to a dark. If you start dark and try to work, make it go lighter and lighter, you have to mix a lot of white paint. So it just kinda just makes more economic sense to work that way, light to dark. I use a round brush here to sort of chop around at, around the edges of these columns and um, it's a little bit thinner, so it's easy to maneuver to kind of edit and revise. I'm spritzing the palette because it is drying, um, but here's a little tip for you, masking tape. Um, masking tape is a way that you can block off and uh, shield areas from being painted on, or you can also use it as like a stencil. I'm gonna do both here. Double tip, I use a knife to edit the masking tape to be a bit thinner. The dry brush method is essentially just that. I'm getting a brush that's dry, it's not damp at all, and I'm putting just a little bit of paint on the tips of it, and I'm just lightly and lightly rubbing the bristles with the paint against a, a surface that usually is in contrast to the pigment. And those mix, not actually like a wet and wet method, but those colors are mixing in our eye. Uh, kind of like this cat that I have here, when you look up close, it's just a bunch of dots. But those dots, depending how dense they are, depending how close they are to each other, start to create different value structures, which then create shapes and forms. Um, so I'm just kind of going through and I'm, I'm putting more and more paint down. It's becoming dense and more dense. And it's creating that effect, that gradation effect, dark to light. 
and it's, it's sort of like an illusion of this transparency. So when you're, when you're done with your paintings on any kind of material you're using in tape to mask off, you want to be sort of gentle when you're removing the tape. It can have, have a tendency to tear off that paper. So just be gentle and be, be slow with it. So a quick review, you know, we have this transparency model, which the pigment, either water or mediums to create an actual transparency or the illusion of transparency, wet on wet or a dry brush graphic texture. See ya.